Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Energetic Armament is back. It's been a while since we did a review for them. I have good news though, they will be at Suppress Fest this October. So if you want to hear this suppressor and their other suppressors in their line, make sure you head to suppressfest.com and grab your tickets because they are selling fast. But today, we are going to do a in-depth review of their Ferox. Ferox, Latin for fierce or savage. Pretty cool that Energetic Armament always puts some thought into naming their products. They all have cool little meanings. Uh, we're gonna see just how savage this suppressor is today on probably one of the most savage and uh, hard use platforms that we could muster here on the channel. And that is a uh, 10 and a half inch barrel Mark 18 full auto. So as you know, I am a 0702 now. That is a new build that I just completed. So we are going to run the hell out of the suppressor today. So we are going to shoot it on a 16 inch barrel, of course, to see, you know, just how good that sound profile can get. And then we're gonna run it pretty hard on the machine gun. So that's gonna be fun. So uh, let's go ahead and dive deep into the Ferox here in the studio. Then of course, we'll hit the range and see just how it does. Let's get to it. All right, opening up the box. You have some manuals and warranty information, and then you have their channel block tool, a takedown tool, the suppressor, and some anti-seize grease to apply to the threads of the mount and the front cap that is interchangeable that we will get to. Um, yeah, we know it has anti-seize on it because uh, you do end up getting it on your hands uh, when you manipulate it, when you're learning the suppressor before a, re a review. So I was able to clean it up so it looks nice and pretty for all those B-roll shots. Comes in at an overall length of 5.9 inches, so they were honest with themselves. Obviously measured from the top, didn't round up. Okay, diameter comes in at 1.63 inches and the weight 12.5 ounces. So that is a really workable weight especially on the end of an SBR slash machine gun. Now, as far as the material, how do they keep that weight that light? 100% constructed. The front cap, the entire baffle stack and body here, and the mount, the whole thing, is constructed of 17.4 heat treated steel to H900, and it is DFAR uh, source, should I say. So basically what that stands for is Defense Federal Acquisition Regulation US Source Steel, meaning Energetic Armament gets all their steel here from the US, it is certified, and that is for defense contracts. So during wartime, uh, our allies cannot turn into enemies and nobody can basically hold us to the coals on supply and shipment of raw materials for us to build weapons. So pretty cool. All the steel, in short, comes from the United States, high quality stuff. Construction, another area they save weight. As you can see, it's a little thinner here. Hopefully that will translate well on video but it's constructed of a tubeless design. So the baffles are the tube and full circumference welded. And that's exactly where that 12.5 ounce weight comes from. All right, your mounting interface is gonna be 1.375 by 24 hub Bravo. So that's awesome there. Does ship with a half by 28 uh, direct thread adapter. Of course, you could use something like this, a uh, dead air chemo, throw it on there. Then you can use it with dead airs. QD mounts, of course, there's a plethora of other companies you can do that with, that's just, one example. Now, as far as caliber rating, it is rated for a plethora of calibers. I'll go ahead and throw them up on the screen here so you guys can read it. And as far as barrel length restrictions, there are none. They have a temperature restriction. So be careful, don't let it get over the thousand degree Fahrenheit mark. Of course, like anything, anything can and will fail if you abuse it too hard. Now, this is a hard use suppressor. It's going to take time to get to temperatures over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. But if you don't want to beat the shit out of your gun, I suggest you don't beat the shit out of your suppressor either. I would say three to four mags of full auto and then a nice cool down. This thing can handle it just fine. Now, as far as cost, Capital Armory is selling this right now, the filming of this video for $699. So you have a sub $700 suppressor and wait times right now for suppressors at filming fast as less than a day. Some are, some are same day approvals, 
the average is 48 hours to a week. That is insane. I don't know what planet we're on, what world we're living in right now, but suppressors are transferring in less than a week. And this is a sub $700 can designed for machine guns, short barrel rifles. So it's pretty cool. As far as finish, you have black nitride here, and they also sell a Magpul Flat Dark Earth High Temperature Cerakote, which would look really nice on that Mark 18 that we're gonna be using later. So, uh, damn. But anyway, we're gonna see what we can do here for the finish on the black one. We are going to run it through the ringer because if something happens, leads me to my next topic, the party tricks of this new suppressor. One of them comes from an older suppressor in their lineup, and that is the ID ring. So this is a patented design here with Energite Armament. If you guys are new to them, ingenious. Uh, because of stupid regulations at the ATF, if you have your tube destroyed and your serialized information is up here on the tube where things can go wrong and it blows up, you're shit out of luck. You're out of your tax stamp, your weight, which they used to be long, so you're out all that money and your tax stamp. Now, what will happen if you have a catastrophic failure forward of that ID ring is you send it into them, they pull this off, slide it back on a new tube body, and send it right out the door. And apparently, rumor is they can do that in under one business week. So you mail it out on a Monday, and it should come back on a Friday, depending on how you ship it. That's pretty insane. Basically unheard of. Uh, so really, really cool product there. You guys can sleep tight, nice and warm and fuzzy, knowing that uh, you're not gonna lose your tax stamp and you're now, you know, 22 minute wait for your suppressor. Crazy. Its next party trick is back pressure reduction. So I mentioned it in the past couple of reviews of other companies' suppressors that that is the direction the market is going. We're now more worried about the shooter versus onlookers, so we want less pressure escaping the ejection port to your right ear. We want less gunk going into your nose, your respiratory system, your eyes, and of course, you don't want your platform getting dirtier for no reason and overrunning your bolt, getting higher bolt speed, inducing malfunctions down the road. So, this is a four baffle design, and the Ford section has radial gas bleed off chambers. I'll show you a little cool animation here I found on their website that illustrates the gas flow path. If you guys are following at home, pretty self-explanatory suppressor for baffles. So you have a large blast chamber area to take that initial blast and then it slowly bleeds off before the projectile leaves the front muzzle bore line of the suppressor. So pretty awesome little can. It feels very stout here in person. Uh, those of you that will be out at Suppress Fest 2024 will be able to hold one yourselves and, of course, shoot it, hear it, and see how it runs on, I'm sure, a Mark 18. Because if they don't have one, I'll just bring mine and you guys can use it on mine. So, without further ado, let's get out there. I'm going to bring a 16 inch and that Mark 18, and we're going to see just how it does. Let's get to it. Before we get shooting, a quick word from our sponsor, Capital Armory. They're the nation's largest silencer dealer and have expanded their silencer shipping ability to multiple states, with even more on the way. They can still ship directly to Texas residents, but they can now deliver silencers directly to your door for those in many other states. The process is simple and keeps everything in-house. So there are no additional dealers, transfer fees, or headaches. They manage the entire process from start to finish to make your life easier. The process is very simple. Once you purchase a silencer online through their website, you'll be contacted to begin your online customer profile to provide them with fingerprints and other necessary information to complete your e-file form four. After the ATF approves your form, Capital Armory will initiate electronic transfer paperwork with you and your silencer will be mailed directly to your front door. And the best part is, your customer profile only needs to be done once so you'll be ready to go for all future orders. Head to CapitalArmory.com today to learn more.
back to the fish. Let's go. All right, guys, that was one forbidden popsicle there at the end. Uh, straight off the bat, the most noticeable thing this suppressor does is reduce gas to your face. I just dumped four mags full auto and got zero gas to my right eye. And I do shoot nose to charging handle, okay? You can see how close I'm shooting here. And I'm using wide frame sunglasses. I was looking for my tighter Oakley five squares before I left the house. I couldn't find them. They do a better job of sealing here next to my cheekbone. Uh, didn't need them. So that was a big deal, big deal. Probably the most noticeable thing about this can. Um, was great on the Mark 18. I, well, I did get a little bit of gas out of the uh, Super Duty 16 inch. That is, I guess it's gassed more than this one. The gas port must be a little larger. Typically when I do reviews with that gun, if you guys pay attention, it, it does gas a little bit more than any other host. So, but the fact I was able to shoot full auto suppressed 120 rounds back to back without my right eyeball falling out of my head, it's pretty good, okay? Uh, I mean, this thing was like white and then turned red here at the very end where they have that radial venting. It was like red, uh, which looked badass. So that's about as much as I would shoot it. I was not giving it much time at all to cool off. I was just, boom, just dropping the mag, putting another one in and going. Um, I did wear Ear Pro for that because I was concerned because it was direct thread, it could loosen up. I can't just reach up and touch it, okay? <laughs> My gloves would just permanently attach to the can and melt. Um, so I was like, well, let's just full send this guy. And uh, so I was like, all right, let's err on the side of caution. I'll wear ears in case, you know, mid full auto string, this thing just blows off the end of the gun. <laughs> so uh, it did not though. Uh, prior to shooting that string, I just took the included end cap wrench, put it on the hex parts here on the end cap and just gave it a little little tighten. I didn't cut crazy wrenching on the guns. I wanna be able to take it off. And uh, I checked it again after filming and everything was fine. Uh, it did not loosen at all. So kind of shocked me at all. So did not loosen direct thread, full auto, pretty awesome. On the uh, off frame over there on the back of my truck cooling down, I have the 16 inch um, Super Duty Geisley. Uh, did great on that, um, sounded good. What shocked me even more than the, the low gas, or no gas should I say, was the sound profile on the Mark 18. It was incredibly good. It should have been way louder considering it's such a, a light or a short can that is geared more towards high volume of fire, less gas, more than, than overall suppression. And it did very well, very well. Did a good job at sending all of the pressure away from the shooter's face. Um, I'm really trying to find something to complain here. Um, I will notice when using a, a, a oven mitt in between takes to get this popsicle off here, um, it just is kind of hard to grip the can because it's so smooth. So, you know, it would be nice to have some knurling somewhere here along the suppressor where those, those shooting mitts, those hot mitts, those oven mitts that everybody uses to move their cans back and forth at the range can just bite into a little bit or just help you get, uh, remove it, get it on and off. Other than that, I mean, it's, it's, I'm trying to find something wrong with it and I'm having a hard time. Uh, I'll review the footage at home, see what we have as far as jetting out the front. Uh, I didn't see anything when I was shooting. And the berm from my angle, I'll show you on my phone here in a minute while I'm talking. Um, the berm's 
in the dark. The sun's behind it, so it's casted a shadow all the way past me right now. And uh, I, I didn't see any jetting or fireballs or anything with the suppressor on. Without the suppressor, it's giving me a sunburn for sure. So uh, pretty cool little can for the $700 mark. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Performs well. Uh, now I'm kind of curious to shoot the Sonus 9mm. I have it full review and I haven't shot it yet. So now I'm going to kind of bump that up my uh, filming list and get that done. Because if this performed that good, I can't wait to hear what the new 9mm submachine gun can sounds like. If you guys have any questions, as usual, leave them in the comment section below. I stick around for a couple days after the upload and I try to answer everybody's questions. So if you have anything that I missed, please fire away and I will return fire and let you know what I thought. See you guys next time.